History is a way of preserving heritage and timelines, sometimes good and positive, other times disturbing, painful, and unrecoverable, like the lives lost during the Mexican-American War of 1846. How much do you know about the founding history of Texas, or Nueces, and Rio Grande River? How about the history of gold being found in California in the first U.S. conflict fought mostly on another land? There is so much to know, and you are at the center of that knowledge. Hello, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I will be sharing the causes, significance, effects, preserved, and unpopular facts of the Mexican-American War. Before we go on, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. You could do that by clicking on the subscribe button below. Where to start from? Okay, let's go all the way to the beginning. The beginning. The Mexican-American War can also be called the Mexican War. Spanish Guerra de 1847 or Guerra de Estados Unidos a Mexico, which means the War of the United States against Mexico. It all started in 1845 with a land dispute over whether Texas ended at Mexico's river border, the Nueces River, or the United States River border, the Rio Grande. This war was recorded to be the foundation of the bad blood between the U.S. and Mexico. After U.S. annexation of Texas, i.e. Texas became a part of the U.S. in March 1845, and Mexican President Jose Joaquin wanted no relationship with the United States. Yet it had been recorded that Mexico had been mishandling the governance of California, which put settlers at displeasure with the Mexican rule. In September of the same year, United States President James K. Polk sought to settle the land dispute and purchase California and New Mexico for the whopping sum of $30 million. By 1846, Americans had adopted an idea known as Manifest Destiny, which believes that America was destined to stretch westward from the Pacific Ocean and beyond. This belief was somewhat responsible for the reason the American government sought to claim those lands. He sent John Slidell to accomplish this secret task. Although secret, the Mexican president was already aware of Slidell's plan and refused to see him. Messages were sent back to Polk on how Jose had ignored Slidell and he was angered and sent General Zachary Taylor to take his troops and occupy the borderline between Nueces and the Rio Grande in January 1846. In mid-1846, Polk sent war messages to Congress. On the 9th of May, 1846, Polk's war message to Congress indicated that the hostilities on the Mexicans' grounds were due to their refusal to pay U.S. claims and the rejection of negotiation with Slidell. On that very evening, Polk received word that the Mexican army had entered the Rio Grande
or resistant. In 1846, the former Mexican president and general, Antonio Lopez de Santa, instead of finding a better balance for peace, tried to persuade Polk to negotiate the peace treaty between the United States and Mexico if allowed to live his exiled days in Cuba. Unfortunately for him, when he returned to Mexico, Santa Ana has taken charge of the Mexican army. As the war intensified with Mexico on the losing side, a peace treaty of Coenga was signed on the 13th of January between American and Mexican officials. California was a part of one of the war fronts of the Mexican-American War. Still in January 1847, America led a victorious fight in the Battle of Rio San Gabriel and the Battle of La Mesa near Los Angeles. Americans' victory here led to the end of the fighting in the location, claiming California as Americans' new land. The victories of the United States were on the rise, and the Mexican troops' casualties were also on the rise. In February 1847, General Taylor had won several battles on the south of Rio Grande. A notable one was the grueling and challenging Battle of Monterey. Between February 22nd and 23rd, Santa Ana led about 14,000 men of the Mexican troops against Taylor's 5,000 men of the United States troops at the Battle of Buena Vista. This was going to be Taylor's first loss. Still, he proved that quality was better than quantity when his artillery unit fired at close range into the Mexican army, causing them to retreat and granting Taylor the victory by taking possession of northeastern Mexico. Polk wasn't done with his plan of war. He later ordered General Winfield Scott to have his army move to Veracruz, Mexico, by sea, then march inland to Mexico. Like a loyal soldier, Scott obeyed and followed Polk's plan. General Winfield Scott and Commodore Matthew C. Perry made the first ever successful amphibious landing in the United States history on the 9th of March, 1847, at Veracruz in Mexico. The Battle of Veracruz recorded the most death of the American troops to yellow fever. Scott, just like Kearney, met resistance, but a Cerro Gordo and Contreras. There, the surviving troops of Scott and the Mexican troops of Santa Ana battle at the Cerro Gordo, outnumbering the Mexican army. Scott's troops entered Mexico City in September 1847, and by then, the American army had surrounded and overwhelmed the Mexican troops, leading to the end of the Mexican-American War. Scott continued, and with his troops, marched on to the largest city in Mexico, the city of Puebla. They weren't in support of Santa Ana taking charge of the army, and surrendered to Scott, making Scott's advancement toward Mexico City less stressful. On getting to Mexico City, the road leading through was blocked by the Chapultepec Castle. With artillery bombardment, the U.S. Army charged into the Citadel. By the 13th of September, the U.S. Army faced an assembly of teenage Mexican military cadets who defended their position to the death. They were called Niños Heros, or Heroic Children. On the 14th of September, 1847, Taylor had captured Mexico City and led the United States Army into the final victory of the Mexico-American War. The Outcome According to an estimation made by the Mexican government, the lives of 25,000 Mexican civilians and soldiers were claimed by the war, while the Americans lost 1,500 members of their troops to battle wounds and inaction. 10,000 troop members of the United States were lost to infections and diseases, although estimation between each war casualties may differ. The Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo was presented on the 2nd of February, 1848. It indicated that Mexico had accepted its boundary to be the Rio Grande. The treaty also included California and New Mexico, which were once the northern provinces of Mexico, were given to the United States. After the defeat of Mexico and the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo, Mexico sold New Mexico, Nevada, Utah, Arizona, California, Texas, and western Colorado for $15 million, which was half the sum that was offered by Polk before the commencement of the war. The treaty also included a pledge that Mexicans who remain in the territory, acquired by the United States in the war, will retain ownership of their land and automatically be approved to be U.S. citizens. A few days after the ownership of California had moved from Mexico to the United States, gold was found in California for the first time, which amounted to the acquisition of massive mineral wealth in the United States as they continued with extending its border to the Pacific Ocean. Acquiring these territories increased sectional antagonism in the United States and renewed the slavery extension issue, which was dominant since the Missouri Compromise of 1820. The proposed Wilmot Proviso, which was formed to ban slavery in the newly acquired lands from Mexico, was never passed in Congress, 
but was put in acrimonious debate, a really angry and bitter debate. General Zachary Taylor was tagged as a hero of the war. He later became the 12th president of the United States. The leaders of On the Mexico side during the Mexican-American War were Jose Yoquan de Herrera, Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana, and Mariano Arista. On the American side were James K. Polk, Zachary Taylor, Stephen W. Kearney, Winfield Scott, Robert F. Stockton, and John C. Fremont. Mexicans have since then claimed to see America as what it truly is, a questionable and greedy country, which of course, Americans do not accept. Thus, the Mexican-American War is the foundation of the bad relationship between Mexico and the United States. Was this video helpful? How much information do you think is missing? What conspiracy do you think the Mexicans or Americans have cooked up to preserve their side of the story? What did you hear about the Mexican-American War? Let me know in the comment section below, and I will respond to the first three people. I do hope this video was intriguing, interesting, and helpful. Please like and subscribe to my history channel so you do not miss more videos like this. Click on the bell-shaped icon to turn on the notification.